Hello guys and welcome into this new session of us developing tabs manager together live. So let's uh, summarize what we had done in previous session. We finished this add link and link list and it is real time. So when we type something here and add it, it pops up here immediately and it uses WebSockets. This is nice, but we don't have any authentication at the moment. So all the links, uh, let me move myself here. All the links in the database are, you know, not linked to a user. And we definitely want to support multiple users who, who will use this app. So first of all, I want to introduce you more to the Lucia authentication library. Uh, I think I made some review about it on my first video, but we didn't touch it since then. Uh, and uh, I suggest we just go and check it out. So oh, also you can notice I started using VS Code. I give it a try. I want to compare it with uh, WebStorm. Also my WebStorm license is going to end pretty soon. So I want to try this nice thing. Okay, so basically we install the Lucia, then we need to use some adapter um, and uh, there are multiple options, like you can attach it to MongoDB through Mongoose or uh, through Prisma to a variety of databases. So our choice is Postgres and Prisma because we use it. So let's check it out. Uh, here you can see how we can install the adapter. Let's do that. And here is how we can configure the whole thing. So I suggest we go to our server folder and uh, let's create a new file there called aup.ts and here we'll manage everything that is related to authentication. So let's copy this code and let's go through it. So first of all, this is the adapter itself and this is Prisma client. Uh, once we have the client, uh, we can put it inside, oh, we can create a Lucia object with it by wrapping the Prisma client to Prisma adapter, and that will be Lucia adapter. Okay, but we already have the Prisma client here, so let's just uh, reuse it. Yeah, I'll just call it Prisma, I think. Yep, and this thing I want to call Prisma adapter. So it's a little bit cleaner what, what's going on. And Lucia, we need to import, oh no. Yeah, we need to import it from this. Okay, let's check out. Uh, we might have some errors here and there, and this is fine. We'll fix all of them. Uh, so it is missing environment variable. I guess this is what it wants. Let's put it here. Okay, but it expects it to be not just string or undefined, but uh, I think it's some other thing, dev or prod. Okay, fair enough. So let's say if not end equals equals production, then we'll say prod, other it will be dev. This is simple enough. Uh, later on, we'll refactor it so it's more type safe. But for now, it'll work. And we need to import our Prisma stuff. Yeah, it's our Prisma client. What don't you like? The following properties are missing. Ah, right. Okay, so before we can use. Um, Prisma with Lucia, we need to make some models for it. So let's go to the documentation and we'll do everything that it wants from us. Uh, this is basic usage. We need to go to um, schema. Okay, okay, this is, we've done all of 
that. I think we also need to do this thing. And we'll put it here. Okay, later on we can define additional user attributes for our users, but now we have none. Okay, what else? Uh, we need to define a user model. So I think somewhere here they had Prisma schema uh, that might be in the in the yeah in the Prisma adapter section. My bad. Hey, can we go there, please? Oh, okay. That's me, by the way. I think I clicked the wrong button by mistake. Okay, Prisma. Yeah, now it works. Okay, so this is a basic Prisma model. Uh, let's define in our Prisma schema. So our link will be later related to the user. Uh, but right now let's define everything just related to Lucia to make it work. And later on we'll link them. And uh, let's review what we've done. So now we have user model, it has just ID. Uh, and related sessions and keys. So sessions is like, well, you can have your mobile application. This is one session, web application. This is another session and so on and so on. Basically how many devices are authenticated to use your user. It has some expires information, user it is related to and its ID. So we can delete sessions and uh, create new sessions for a user freely and database keeps track of, of all of that. Uh, you probably noticed some services have a sign out of all other sessions button. So this is how this is managed. Okay, so key is your authentication methods. If you are coming from Firebase, it can be called providers there, like email and password, uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc. providers. So all of that in Lucia called keys, and uh, you can have at least one key that is related to the user or multiple keys if uh, user linked multiple providers okay and this is basically it there is a hash password user it is related to if it is a primary method or not you have to have at least one uh, primary key when it expires if it expires and that's it okay so let's see if Lucia is fine now. I think we need to regenerate our Prisma schema. Okay, and now it should be fine. I think we want to export this off. And um, might be that um, VS Code didn't catch our update yet. So let's try to run the code and see if there are any compilation error errors. I think we need to mention this AUF stuff somewhere uh, to make it included into our branch, not branch, I mean bundle. So let's mention it here and a small trick that we can do is to call to string just to mark it as used that actually does nothing okay and once we save it produces no error which is a good sign and that means that this is only uh, IDE didn't catch our Prisma generated stuff okay one more thing how we can check it is we can run pnpm check this is swelled kit additional command that runs TypeScript uh, check on our code. There might be multiple errors from our previous sessions that we didn't fix 
because this is first time I think we run it on this project. Uh, but let's check if there is anything related to authentication. Yeah, seems like nothing yet. And everything here will fix, uh, but later. This is for swell front end part. Okay, cool. Let's try to define an endpoint in our VS server. It will use similar code, but it will say auf sign in. And our data uh, will be like, first of all, let's log out everything. I want to see what's inside our message because since last session, uh, I think one week passed. Uh, I think sin uh, starting from today, I will record a session every day, not like uh, once a week. Okay, uh, this is a good call from GitHub Copilot, but let's comment out everything else. And I want just to console log message.data. Okay, this is fine and we need to make this sign in form live. So let's go there to the client stuff. So we have roots, auf, sign in and sign up. And let's make some inputs. We can use Daisy UI for that. And I'm looking for input, file input text input yeah we need just the basic one for now later on we'll make it uh, nicer better etc mm -hmm. so we'll actually need to one will be email email and another will be password. I use type email and type password so browser can do its thing and you know hide symbols in password or check validity of email or on mobile devices this email type um, makes your mobile browser to understand you want how to complete your email with variety of options you have saved in the mobile phone memory. So it's better to use these specific types than to use just text. Okay, and uh, we need a button. I think button was just class button. And it will be of type button, so it doesn't refresh our page um, because default is submit and that sends a form. We don't have a form here. Uh, but basically submit type submits a form which triggers page refresh and we don't want that. Uh, what we want here is on click it to call um, sign in and with email and password. An email and password we will link here so we'll say bind email or bind yeah bind value equals email I think if I remember swelled correctly and password here and we need to define them in the script session uh, section so it will be yeah, let's let's use what we find nice here. Okay, just email and password is fine. Ah, we need also sign in function. So let's say function sign in. Yeah, I think we don't need to provide these things. We will have access to them here. Uh, what we need to do is we need to have access to our VS um, connection. I mean VS, not V 
Visual Studio Code, but uh, WebSocket WS. So how we did it in the main page? Yeah, we we had used components here, and let's look inside component. We used store, okay, and inside store we had access to our socket. Okay, so we will do the same thing. We will define our OOF store later on, but right now for simplicity and to make it work, uh, let's have access to it right here. So socket, socket, and we import it. How is we cannot await on the root level? should be possible uh, what does pnpm check say about that nothing it might be that uh, vs code doesn't know we can actually use it here or did i miss it oh yeah i missed it my bad uh Okay, so there should be then another way of doing it. I think we need to define a um, store. Okay, let's do that. That's not long. Oh, store.ts and we export it. We can basically copy this stuff and remove some parts of it. So first let's define our store interface so it will have a user and let's say just user with ID for now okay also we need to keep state of sign in or sign up operation uh, which is probably just is loading or false for now that will work and there are string go on define yep initial state ah, it can be undefined yeah so undefined false undefined okay so we have store we have helper function here. We listen for socket messages. And here we'll have uh, handlers for all the mm, notifications coming from the backend. And let's define our custom sign in and si sign up and also sign out. Now, before we do it here, uh, let's uh, let's try this too. So let's set state loading true error undefined. Then we send auf sign in, and data will be email string password string. Okay, basically same thing for sign up. Can we get out the complete please? Okay. And sign out will be, uh, we won't update the state of loading. Uh, we'll just send sign out. I think and it will be almost instant okay so now we need to define this handlers for uh, server messages so if it is auf sign in we'll set state with user and if it is well basically it's the same for signed up 
and for sign out sign out we just set state to undefined yeah well, let's let's add load and state here too okay so we're loading false same here and we can delete this so this is very very simple version we don't do much here and we don't do much uh, type safety that we'll definitely do later we'll have a uh, um, refactoring session where we'll improve all this code okay now let's uh, start using it one sec I need to close all, all the extra tabs okay so I'm interested in our store is it called our store our store yes wait is it capital A yeah I think it should be lower case A yep so I want small lowercase O store yep and um, yeah I think now we don't need this sign up function we'll use O store sign in leave email and password okay cool but before we sign in we need to have a user so we, need, we have to sign up first so let's copy this code and use it here just call it sign up everywhere sign up and on our backend we need to handle sign up and not just sign in Okay, let's see how it works. I'll close this terminal. An extra one we don't need now. WebSocket is not defined. All right. So we need to copy this file that says that it is client side rendering and we don't open WebSocket connection while rendering the application on the backend. okay it seems to compile fine now uh, let's look at it sign in we have something sign up we have same thing uh, let's try to sign up with some email like anton.test.com some password sign up so we received the message well done now let's actually use Lucia to sign up the user so we will need to provide it with some data ah yeah I think I, I skipped one step here I need to define what is the type of this AUF object and it was somewhere somewhere on the main page I think in the getting started yeah okay okay maybe it's not just dot sign up it's probably something else let's use the documentation I tend to skip things and move fast but sometimes it doesn't work so is our object typed yeah we've imported it our dot aha here we are create user this is what we need we expect it to be 
data with key and some attributes just like here okay wonderful so this is an example using password and username we'll have email and not username so let's say email then provider user ID this is our email itself and password well it's password and attributes we don't have any yet so we'll just leave this an empty object okay cool we need to use try catch in case something was invalid we have one here uh, so let's just modify it to be au slash sign up slash error okay this looks good we need to send back um, some data it will be user and we should say signed up well I think we use this format like link slash head is a common name then slash success for success slash error for error we will rethink it a little bit later uh, right now let's use this format uh, because I already uh, wrote it everything like this and we'll refactor it in a second okay let's see if it works uh, so anton.dev.com one two three four five sign up and uh, we might get the answer back but we didn't log it anywhere yeah did we yeah I didn't watch it can I try again yeah we don't have any error <laughs> okay let me refresh page here so let's see this is our socket and the send data we get error so cannot read properties of undefined reading dot create dot create do we use any dot create anywhere well actually let's uh, do console error here with the error itself so we can see details of the error here myself out of the way and uh, what exactly you cannot read let's see it seems to be some inner error of um, Prisma adapter for Lucia uh, did we forgot to create something dot user dot create well so this is transaction from Prisma. Ah, yeah, this is he here. It is defined, and uh, transaction dot user is undefined, which means I think Prisma generate didn't generate it the code for some reason. Let's check it out. So if we look in node modules and uh, find dot prisma dot prisma is not here yeah weird it was not generated okay one other way is to go to add prisma slash client and index dot js what it actually do it proxies uh, the all, all the prisma inner stuff uh, from dot prisma slash client and we can see it is not here so it was not generated and maybe that was the reason why uh, ID didn't sh ID showed us an error about Prisma well let's try again Prisma got updated we can uh, uh, upgrade it but we're interested in generating the Prisma client and uh, is it generated I don't see it this is weird 
Okay, let's dig a little bit deeper. So we don't see it here, and uh, but it should be there, like it says, it is generated. Ah, wait, it is inside .pmpm folder. Okay, and uh, add Prisma dot client dot prisma okay here is the generated stuff and i guess we should find user stuff here yep we can keep looking for the user interface but it's basically somewhere here yeah okay mm. Maybe I just need to restart this thing. So might be after generation, I need to restart the Svelte Kit server. So it get using new node module. Uh, let's try it out. So this is our connection. And this is our data. Okay, we got different error. Prisma user dot create. Oh, we don't have the table. Yeah. So we generated new models, but we need to send them to the database. And uh, let me define a connection to the database here. So we have uh, tabs manager, which stands for, I think TM, which, which stands for tabs manager. So let's use TM for a short, um, what is it called? Ah, well, key, I don't know, slug, TM local, because it will be local database. And let's use connection string, because we have one in the end file, I think. Yep, here we are. I copy this, I paste it here, the rest is fine, let's test connection, success, and let's connect now. Okay, so let's look at the structure, what tables are there. We have Prisma Migrations table, uh, we've just, I think one record should be there, yep, one record here, and links table which keeps track of all our links from here okay we need to add the migration so let's close all of this this is all good we need prisma so after we modify the prisma schema we need to run one more command pm pm prisma Migrate dev that will create the missing migration here, and uh, we need to give it a name. I will call it Alf Tables, and here is our migration create table user, create table session, create table key, some unique keys, and indexes and constraints. Wonderful and it is applied and our database is in sync. Let's check it here. So we have three new tables, keys, sessions, and users. They're empty now, but let's try to create the user again and they should now work and be populated with the new row. Uh, hello? Ah, look. Server is down. Okay. Thousands more times again, filling this data. Okay, we got success and we got now we user ID. This is good. Let's check the database. User table. Not describe, sorry. 
but show table records and uh, well it's just one ID column right now because we didn't define any additional columns for our user and let's look at the session do we have anything there no not yet we need to create a session for this VS or VS WS uh, connection for our WebSocket connection to keep track of it okay let's close this but we should definitely have one key for it yeah so key has ID you see email prefix here and then my email that I entered this is our provider then it's hash password and the user ID and primary true expires no okay so we got our user now let's go back to our front end to our store so once we save user we should have ID inside and we got not ID but user ID we need to modify backend response a little bit so we got user and uh, it's ID user dot user ID okay wonderful and let's just just display it on the screen on the front end so here I will say red tag which will display the code as it is and inside will be JSON stringify of our auth store and we will see the state of the store mm, oh, some extra bracket on the back end or oh, missing bracket okay is it fine now hello oh you died okay I got it let's revive you so the state now is just is loading false oh let's make it so it's formatted nicely okay it's loading false and if we create a user let's let's use uh, user2 dot test dot com same password doesn't matter we got it loading true for a second then it lo is loading got false again and we got our user with id inside and this is our second user nice okay so let's keep in mind this uh, id ww something and let's try to sign in again with this I think for sign in uh, we'll do same thing uh, let's display the state of the store yep well it is still here let's refresh the page to clear it and let's sign in and we didn't define the logic for the sign-in on the back end let's fix it um, I still mess with hotkeys uh, VS Code and uh, WebStorm has different hotkeys so sorry if I don't move as quickly as I'd like to okay uh, let's copy same code for now but instead of create user we'll do uh, what it is let's check the API I think we need to validate uh, key password let's check docs so this is sign in sign in without password oh, sorry sign up sign up uh, this is additional attributes that we can keep track of and this is get user if we are an admin we just can get user by ID 
We can update attributes, we can delete users, etc. Uh, and I am interested in authentication. I think it's inside sessions, but let's check key, keys for a second. So this is getting key by user ID. Oh, it's not user ID, it's GitHub user ID. It might be different, might be that. Uh, same thing as email. Okay, get all user keys get keys mm -hmm. validate key password okay this is what I need key okay let, let's uh, memorize this create new key we are not interested at the moment yet update password okay delete Okay, and let's check sessions. So we can create session by just providing user ID. And we can uh, use Lucia to generate a cookies for us. Um, that might be useful, but we're using WebSockets. I'm not sure if we are going to touch cookies at the moment. Uh, validate session ID. Yep. Where is uh, just simple sign in with user and password? Hey. Okay, scroll, scroll, scroll. Yeah, I think it was about keys. But let's check getting started again. Yeah. Documentation could be better. This is for sure. Oh, I'm missing something. Might be my bad too. Okay, let's uh, check everything. Yep, I missed it somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> okay, maybe reference is what we need. Let's look for password, maybe. No, it's not here. Oh, wait, where are the rest of the methods? Ah, okay, here. Create key. Let's continue searching for passwords. Mm -hmm. Create user, update password. I think we're close. Validate key password. Yes, that's what we kept in mind. Anything else? Yeah, I think that is it. So let's try it. Copy it here. So we will basically provide data here and here. And yes, first argument is email, which is provider ID like here for sign up. And let's see what is the key. And what's inside the key so we have user ID here which is fine uh, we can use that and if we want to grab the user itself we can use it uh, but right now since we don't have any other fields in the user let's just uh, keep it simple and use this thing okay sign Sign in error. 
Okay, wonderful. So let's open our uh, terminal to see if we have any errors. Have you died again? Oh yeah, you do for some reason. So I think it was user2 at test.com password1234 and anything? Success or fail? Oh, oh, okay. We, we actually got it here. So it's it was not logged because it was not error. It was success. It was sent through the socket to the client, and we got it here. And ID is www something, just as we expected. Cool. So using one of these methods, sign in, sign up, uh, we can get the user. Uh, now let's just polish a little bit polish our UI so if we sign in or sign up I want store to redirect us so it can use go to I think it was go to yep from navigation and redirect us to the root simple Okay, that will work. Uh, one more thing that we can do is uh, we can show user status in the header. And I think it's in the layout. Yep. So we import our store here and use it to define what LIs we will see here. So if we have the user, okay, this is nice help from GitHub Copilot again. Sign out. Okay, so instead of ref, let's use JavaScript and uh, let's use on click javascript is an old hack that i still use it still work in every browser it just makes uh anchor to still behave like you know with under under underlying behavior and stuff but instead of uh lead you somewhere to some url like with this href it will just execute some javascript so, and here on click, we'll have, oh, actually we'll use our store sign out. Okay, and it should do the trick. Uh, let's just check it out. So we send request to sign out and we need to handle it on the backend. Okay, um, we'll do it in a moment, but one more thing, let's, write a uh, user ID here mm -hmm. user dot ID so we at least see it somehow okay let's try again sign in sign in up <laughs> I made a typo somewhere let me fix that sign in up signed in okay one more time nice so we got redirected which means it worked we see our ID it's not nicely formatted but we're not going to uh, just keep it as ID we'll later on have our username or like first name and avatar but for now it will work and sign out button okay so that works and we don't see sign in sign out buttons because we are already signed in let's make sign out button work 
because right now it does nothing. Yeah, it sends, well, uh, it does its thing, but the backend doesn't handle it. Uh, the backend receives the message, but we need to add the case for it. Sign out. Uh, so we don't have a session yet. Uh, once we have it, uh, I will refactor code a little bit here. Once we have it, we'll basically delete it from the database. Use uh, Lucia to invalidate the session. But for now, let's just uh, return success. Sign out here. And no data. Well, let's let's use empty object just in case uh, something on the front end relies on this property to exist. Okay. And we need some mechanism. So front end remembers from reload to reload that it is actually authenticated. Okay, signed in, sign out. Nice, it works. So one last thing before we wrap up this session is we need to keep track of user being authenticated. So for that, we need to use sessions. And session we can create using Lucia session. Should be somewhere here. Yep, it's simple as that. We have the ID, we create a session. Uh, let's define user ID like this. Session, and we'll need to return session ID. be here ah here session ID okay mm, so this session ID will for now save to the uh, local storage on the front end so front end can understand if it is signed in or not uh, let's update our store so once we receive uh, sign in or sign up on a message from the backend. We will not just save the user, but also the session ID. Well, we can say session ID here, just like this for now. For now, that will work. Okay, and also let's uh, save it to the local storage. So we can define some constant local storage key. Local storage key. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we'll save it to the local storage. And on sign out, we will remove this key. And that's basically it. The only thing is initial state should also uh, use this stuff from the local storage. So it will be either null, either or some object. Okay, let's see. So one more thing is let's write in the layout this prayer and display the AUF store here as well, so we can keep track of it. Okay, we refresh the page and it is here. And let's check our local storage. Oh, wait, what is this data? Ah, I know. This is local storage from my other project in development. Okay, let me clean this. Okay, it is now. Okay, let's sign in. 
Anton password. Okay, and I don't see a session ID here. Let's check the response. Yeah, it's not here. Ah, yes, I did it for sign up, but not for sign in. So we need to implement that for sure. So for sign in, we create a session, we send it back. Okay. And on sign out, we need to clean that session. So this is current connection and we can keep track of this connection uh, session and user ID as well. So let's say user ID string. We can use empty string because anyway, if we check if user ID, empty string will behave as undefined or null. And also session ID, same thing. Yeah, we can remove type definition, it will be inherited from the empty string thing. So we need to save that information. So user ID will work and session ID will work as well. Okay. Same for sign in. Just use key here and same for session ID. And our code simplifies. Okay. So having these um, variables here inside the connection with this particular user, uh, we can later on on sign out, just say like, hey, delete session. Yeah, oh, is it different stuff? Let's check, there is another probably different named method, invalidate session. Yep, the session must be invalidated on sign out. Uh, all sessions. Yeah, this is fine. So invalidate session, just session. And once this is done, we can say user ID empty string, session ID empty string. Cool. Let's see how it all works. So let's sign out. Oh, we got an error record to delete doesn't exist ah uh, yeah well that's because we, we don't we haven't created it yet uh, let's clean our local storage so we'll start we'll start from scratch we'll sign in we got our user id and session id this is cool now it is here in the local storage. This is cool too. Then on the server, it should be in these variables. And uh, it also should be in the database. So if we look at the sessions table, we should see at least one session. Yeah, here it is. So this VQI, VQI, this is our session. Okay, and once we click sign out, it's not only cleans the local storage, but it also cleans the database. Yep, saying no data here. Why is this tab is keep loading? Yeah, this extension for databases a little bit simple 
but this is fine. We'll work for now. Okay, so seems like we've implemented our sessions. Uh, let's review it and let's see if there are any other, uh, you know, bugs that we can fix. I think I can foresee one. So let's say we sign in. I think we can remove this stuff. Uh, remove it from here and from sign up to. Okay. So let's say we sign in. We have this session ID in the local storage. But once we clear, oh, once we refresh the page, the connection with the server will be closed. And then once page is refreshed, it will be reopened, but it will be completely new connection. And these variables will be empty. So the server will basically don't know what this new connection is. Is it about which user, sorry? <laughs> Something like that. So for example, right now sign, sign out works fine. Uh, but if we refresh the page, it won't work. It will just log some error here in the terminal on the back end. Uh, let's see. So we refresh the page. As you can see, we got new connection. We click sign out and we got an error. So how do we handle that? We have this session that exists in the database for sure. We can, I think, see it here. So the session is still alive and uh, we, we just need to notify backend that like, hey, we actually have this session still on. So we need to send one more message once we restart the page and we see our user is authenticated. So we'll call this uh, auf resigning. So resigning is kind of silly name, but will work for now. Uh, we need, I think, to use some special method like validate session or something. Yeah, here it is, validate session. Okay. Yeah, there is even validate session user to get the user information at the same time, but session contains user ID. So that's fine for now. Signed in. Cool. Okay, let's see. On front end, we need to do in the AUF store when we initiate the uh, AUF store. And if we see that, let's get AUF store, let's get the value. If the value contains user, we want to send um, this socket re -auf or re -sign in message. And it will be session ID. Let's actually save it somewhere. Let's save it to state variable. So if state user, then we send uh, session ID equals state user session ID. And also let's send ID as a, a simple example of authentication because everybody can send any session ID to the backend right now. 
we need at least something to verify oh this session is for this user but later on we'll use cookies i think um, to make it more secure because what we're doing now storing uh, our session id in the uh, local storage is not safe like all, all the plugins or extensions that you have in the browser can access it it's basically like someone can steal it so let's do it id um id 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 is inside state user id okay and here we validate this id and we need to check if session dot uh, user id not equals user id hey we need to get this data from message data const id uh, session id from the message so session id session id and id okay so if it is not equals we'll call it invalid session okay um yeah well we use the same name here and there i don't want it let's keep it simple okay this is better okay let's see if it all works we restart the server we refresh the page we have some data in the local storage let's see yeah it sends resign in with this id and session it got validated and uh, we got signed in message here which says id is same session id is same this is good um yep i think that will work for now so we can refresh the page and it keeps being signed in uh, we can sign up we can sign out and uh, it all works let me just double check before we go okay and let's sign up a new user to check if sign up is not screwed user free let it be sign up yep it works refresh the page no errors wonderful stuff so thank you for your attention and in the next session we will do um, some beautifying of this sign in sign up ui also cover some edge cases that come with that um, and add some user attributes for the user so it's not just you know user id somewhere here so new session tomorrow see you